I'd like to introduce you to the latest member of the RH Designs family, that is the Process Master. We allowed the original Process Master to go out of production, but it was resurrected after some APUG requests and a user survey. And as a result, we improved the design and added a number of important features. What the Process Master does is it allows you to control your processing sequence for film and paper development and it now offers temperature compensated development and factorial development and it has a, an intuitive programming interface which allows multiple stored sequences of processes so that you can recall film, paper and C41 or RA4 or whatever it may be um, and at a touch of a button you can replay uh, sequences of times that you know work for you. It comes complete with a temperature probe and you can also fit an optional foot switch in the front for hands-free control. The new Process Master is in the same box as the Zone Master and shares the similar appearance in style with a white-proof keyboard, a four-character display, an indicator display and an external sensor. In this case the external sensor is a temperature probe which plugs into the front. At the back is an optional um, power socket and the on-off button. Pressing the on-off button does a display check, the software version number, and then comes up with the, the last recorded channel, which is channel 2, and the first time. So let's just go through the display and the basic operation of the buttons. Along the top we have some indicators. The first eight indicators tell you which channel is being used for, the, for, for memory and each channel can store a number of process steps. We then have a number of warning indicators. The plus or minus one indicates if the temperature probe is being used for compensation. The exclamation mark indicates that the temperature probe is desired but not connected. The percentage tells you that the display is counting down in percent rather than in, in time. The next one here with the two little arrows means that the timer is going to run on after the process step so it allows you to deliberately over develop or over process something. And this last indicator tells you whether it's going to pause between the steps or continue in, a, in one cycle. If we go through the buttons, the button layout is based on eight single function buttons which have um, secondary functions with long presses or in different modes. This play button, like a cassette recorder, starts the timer going and the pause button above it pauses the time. If you press pause again, the timer continues. If, if whilst paused, you then press the play button again, it restarts the time from the beginning and does the full time again. This button here cancels and stops the time and moves on to the next step in the sequence. Pressing it a second time when the sequence is stopped resets the unit and takes it back to the first step in the sequence. The button above the cancel button is the programming button. A short press of this button starts you in programming mode which is indicated by the channel indicator flashing. So we're now programming channel 2 and the buttons next to it change the time and subsequent presses of the programming button move it on to the next step in the sequence. So I can increase the time and then I can move to step 2 and increase or decrease the time at will. And so on. When I get to a point which I no longer want to continue the sequence, if I reduce the time to zero, then that will stop the sequence at that point. When I want to come out of that mode, I press the cancel button and that stores it and takes you to the first step in the sequence. So when I now press play, it goes through the sequence and if I quickly stop that and move on to the second one, there's the second time There's the third one, and then it goes back to the beginning because the fourth step in the sequence was zero. So that's how the basic timer works, 
and how you basically program it. There's two other buttons on the right hand side which have special functions. If I press play and start the time, I can count the time down either in seconds or as a percentage of the total time. That's indicated by the percentage light here um, flashing on and off and it's counting down in percentage. At the moment it's less than 94%. So in other words, if I stop the process now, I would have underdeveloped by 92%. And that'll count down to zero and allow you to, for instance, if you want to deliberately over or under um, develop by a certain percentage, this is quite a nice way to achieve it. Pressing the percentage button again reverts back to standard seconds and minutes. If I stop that for a second, the last button in the corner is the user function. If I press this button, it brings up a number of user options that allow you to program the unit to your own particular preferences. And pressing it a second time tells you um, here is the continuous mode. So I can have continuous on, which is indicated by a little double arrow at the top here, or continuous off. And that allows the sequence of steps to run on one from the other. The next one in the cycle is the beep, and I can have the beep off, so we can have some peace and quiet, or on. Let's have it off. The next one in the sequence is the display brightness, and again I can change it between two different levels. For some sensitive processes like um, film development, you might want to use that, especially when you're changing film in the dark. And the next one is the um, battery saver, and this is just a simple um, 30 second delay to turn off the uh, display and the processor to save uh, batteries. And again, I can have it save off or on. And then back to the beginning again. At any point in time, pressing the exit button ends the sequence, stores all the preferences, and uh, returns you back to where you were. And if you turn the unit off and on again, it will remember all those settings.